Hey there viewers, thank you for tuning in to Super Mario Diagnostics once again. Today we are working on a 2012 A8 with a 4.2 liter engine. A lot of work has been done to this vehicle already, but it has some unrelated faults. Um, namely, it had two codes for the intake runner uh, valves or flaps stuck open. I don't have the codes or the scan right in front of me right now at this second, but uh, I will post a picture once I do get that scan um, pulled up. I'll go ahead and post it. Those were the only two codes that I got for it. And the only other symptoms are the, obviously the check engine light on and then also a um, warning on the dashboard to not surpass 4,000 RPMs. Now, reason I picked up the camera, I wasn't going to, but once I saw what I saw, I, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna pick up the camera and show you guys where I'm at with this. Um, right now, I am tied in to the intake runner control valve, right, because it's stuck open. Uh, I want to see if my control valve is doing what it should be doing. And I'm tied into my brown and green trace here. And my scope is already set up. And the idea is to, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and let you guys follow along. What I'm going to do is start the vehicle. And I already hooked this up to Otis. Those of you who know Otis, uh, they have a test plan. They tell you to start a vehicle, rev it up, uh, manually um, actuate those flaps to see if the sensors are reading correctly, and they definitely are. I would love to show you that on camera, but I would have to set all that up. I'm already at the point where I'm going to start disassembling. I'll show you why. I'll show you uh, what I'm disassembling and, and why. But for now, let's go ahead and start the engine. We're taking a look at our scope. So I'm going to rev it up. Awesome. So as you can see in the waveform, it grounded once. Now look at the valve. Look at the flap. It's all the way actuated. Let me see if you guys can see this. Uh, I should have, you should be able to see that on the other camera. And until I let this go, there's still vacuum here, even though this is a normally closed valve, fellas. Normally closed valve, still vacuum. So, what does that tell me? Either my intake runner control valve is stuck open or the vent is clogged because when the valve closes, it opens up a passage to atmospheric, you know, to the atmosphere in order for the vacuum to be displaced by the atmosphere by the atmospheric pressure, so to speak, and release that diaphragm. So what am I trying to show with the waveform? The waveform is only to show that it does have good command and it comes right back. It does ground momentarily when you rev it up, but it does come right back. Let me clean this up a bit. So you can see it just has a momentary vacuum there but the valve either doesn't close or the vent to the atmosphere on that valve isn't um, opening or it's clogged or something. So this is definitely going to need more inspection. The intake manifold is going to have to come off. But the real reason why I picked up the camera was because I was pretty disappointed by Otis. Um, Otis is a very high-end, you know, uh, scan tool that is you know brand specific and this is OE for Audi and um, the results of its self test of the of the test plan resulted in this intake manifold runner positions uh, sensors are okay I confirmed that myself because you could you know actuate and see that it's coming up from zero to hundred percent the malfunction can only be at the intake manifold runners. Replace the intake manifold. End of test. That that doesn't sit, uh, sit too well with me because let's face it. There's a lot of people who won't go as far as to confirming the the that the command has stopped, and they may just do that, and it would be a mistake. You know that that's this. There's something to be said about test plans and also um what do you call those uh those list of part swapping uh 
the diagnostic trouble trees, I guess you could call it. You know, I, I'm not a big fan of those. They do provide some kind of a uh, guidance, but I wouldn't take it as um, set in stone, like written in stone. You have to take it with a grain of salt. Now, why would why would it think that it's stuck open? Why? Like, I just don't understand why that test plan wouldn't include the possibility of an intake uh, runner control valve being stuck open mechanically or if the vent was clogged that's the only thing that actually makes sense because it's going by the position it's using the position of of the runners and the sensor is built directly on the runner so if you look right here that's the position sensor right there it's directly on the runner and this is the diaphragm with the actuator on it it's literally right on it so it doesn't make any sense to me um, that's really why I wanted to pick up the camera because those of you who um, still don't believe in anything outside of the test plans I mean there's you, you should you should you know get outside of that comfort zone and and continue your diagnosis until you're hundred percent now still I'm not gonna lie we're not hundred percent on the diag until we remove that valve and we prove that it is stuck open right now so that's what we're going to do we got the approval I'm going to take off this manifold get to that uh, intake runner control valve and while it's disconnected show that air passes through when it shouldn't so stick around all right so we have everything taken apart and this is the valve right here in question uh, I got a little carried away and started um, testing off camera but this is where it goes seated and what I did was this is where the vacuum supply comes into this is where it goes to the actuators and then this is the little cap for the vent and at first when I first started filming I'm sorry when I first started testing I provided vacuum to this and it was venting I was like oh crap I was wrong but let me go ahead and show you the testing and and, and everything else and um, I started vacuuming here and it was venting to the atmosphere which it is now it's starting to I'm sorry actually let me explain this better when this is a faulty valve the reason why I say that is because when I hold this okay so it's acting up again but <laughs> wow this is making me look bad. Let me show you what I mean. I'm providing vacuum to where vacuum normally comes in, but when I let go, it, it has suction on my thumb. Let me see if you guys can hear this. So there's an open connection here. Even though this is a closed solenoid, this is supposed to be venting from here to the vent, right? It's supposed to be an open channel there. Instead, we have an open channel between all three. There is an a passage from the feed to the output and to the vent so at first it didn't show up that problem did not show up at all what I did was actuate it once and then it started acting up I actuated it exactly according to the diagram the command is on this side the power supply is on this side I did one quick tap and I could instantly see the problem it would never it, it opened up that channel so it it's an intermittent issue <laughs> so I wish I would have filmed that part. It goes to show never just test the solenoid by itself like that. Just like purge solenoids and other uh, solenoids that are normally closed. Always test it under its normal conditions. Give it a good little opening and see if it gets stuck open after it's actuated. So that's just one for the books. We're going to go ahead and swap this out with another original part and um, show the confirmed fix. All right, so we've got our new part here. And I've already had it, I already have it set up for testing. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, this is our new part, same brand, different part number, slightly different. Might be a uh, updated part, who knows? But I have it set up exactly the same wiring as it comes uh, from the harness with my positive on this end right here. And basically, I'm just gonna click it real quick. But before I do that, I'm gonna provide it with vacuum. Remember, this is the feed, the vacuum feed from the vacuum reservoir. 
and this is going to the dia um, the diaphragms, basically the actuators of the flaps. So we can see here. Now, mind you, my my pump here is leaking a bit. So the real, although this might you know show as if it's leaking, the real issue is whether we see any vacuum coming from this side. So. So it does hold for a second. If I was to clamp this, it would do exactly the same thing. But what I want to see is if it gives vacuum when I click it, but it goes right back to atmospheric when I let go. So let me see if I could put you guys in a way that this would work a whole lot better. So let me vacuum it first. We're loading it up with vacuum. We can see that it has not affected our other end. We're going to click it real quick and we did see it temporarily go to vacuum but then jump right back to atmospheric and it does seal well even though I'm giving it vacuum it is no not affecting the other end when the valve is closed so there you go you can see it went down to vacuum and went back up to atmospheric as it should and just to confirm that it's sealing again I'm going to give it vacuum and good to go. Stays unaffected. One more time. I'm going to click it. Right? Goes down to vacuum and right back to atmospheric. So, always confirm the part. Whoa, that light is right. Always confirm that the part works, right? Even though it's new, doesn't necessarily mean that it's good. Test it first, then install it because we do not want to be doing this job all over again. So let's go ahead and put everything back together. All right, fellas, it is all put back together. I've got my camera set up so that we could take a look at the test. I was going to do this with Otis, but eh, Otis is really slow. So I hooked up the Altel and <clears throat> we can see the original codes that came with it. These are the only two codes that came, P200500 and P200400, the intake air temperature. Um, I wouldn't worry about that because that's probably because I had the key on while uh, doing my testing, but it, let's, the focus was intake uh, manifold runner control bank one and two stuck open. So real quick to show you how you could do that same test on the Autel, we need to come back and I believe it may be under one of these two guided functions or hot functions. Um, let's see where it is. Obviously, we're going to have to um, reset adaptations, but for now, we are just going to do this test. And in adapt intake manifold flap potentiometer, uh, it does the same test basically. Check and take. All right. So ignition is on right now. It's basically going to tell me exactly what Otis says. <laughs> you got to love Alta. What, what can I say? Um, <clears throat> let's do this. Position yourself in front of the vehicle. Have a second person start the engine. I don't have a second person. I have a, sec a camera. So what we could do is show specified versus actual this is the the test same test that i did before sorry just, just turning off a fan and basically i'm manually moving this actuator and of course this only shows one of them otis shows both of them so actual 99 percent back to zero so on that's the difference between the autel and otis you will only get one side. Otis will show you both sides, but this issue was for both banks. So let me just set this down here real quick. Turn on the vehicle. And while you guys look at the other camera, I'm going to quickly rev it up according to the instructions and well you guys can't see it 
but Alta doesn't really um, update fast enough. That's where Otis wins on this one too. But no light. The light would have come on by now. It just says, "Please refuel." My check engine light is still on because I haven't cleared the lights. So. Well, that's a poor way to test it, but if the valve is working correctly, I should be able to go back and see that it is not in a fully actuated position, and it is not. And I'm pretty sure, I'm confident, that looking at the video, I'll be able to see that it opens and closes as it should. Um, so that is a fix. So where Otis shines, live data, and you're able to see both positions it fails in the test plan itself in saying that it has to be the runner um, that you should change the intake manifold i uh if anybody could take anything away from this video it's you know um, test plans are good don't get me wrong but they're not they're not 100 percent, and this is a prime example of that um, and it kind of makes me weary of them it, it really makes me not trust them 100 percent. oh just because it says intake manifold you know it doesn't mean we should change that part um, anywho i hope this uh video was useful hope you enjoyed it thank you all for coming along for the ride uh, don't forget to hit that like button that subscribe button and that notifying bell if you haven't done so already i appreciate you all thanks again for watching uh, until next time <laughs>